Hello and welcome back to Microbial Concepts. So this is another video from your first year where you study culture media. Okay, so this is second part. In first part, we have discussed types of culture media depending on the chemical composition. Now we are going to discuss classification of culture media depending on its role. Okay, let's start. So just a quick revision. What is medium? So medium or media in plural is a substance which provides nutrients for the growth of microorganisms. Means the food which we provide in lab for the growth of microbes. The nutrients on which microorganisms are cultivated, it is known as culture media. Okay, a culture medium. The culture media, it can be solid or liquid preparation containing on the nutrients which are required by microorganisms for growth or depending on our aim of our experiment we can design it as we need in need the media in solid or liquid microbes can use the nutrients for of culture media as their food is it is necessary for cultivating them in vitro now culture media vary in their form and composition determining by the species to be cultivated now there is no single media that supports the growth of majority of microbes okay so based on the function of a media it can be used to grow or differentiate or transport or store microorganisms okay so that's the difference now first is enriched medium so enriched medium is one it is made nutritionally rich by adding blood or serum into it so this kind of media is used for cultivation of fastidious microorganisms. Now fastidious microorganisms are one which are highly demanding for their nutritional requirements. Okay, that means um, suppose you have a culture which is fastidious. So you can say that it requires blood in the medium to grow. Okay, if the blood cells or blood is not available, that particular microbe cannot grow because that is the requirement for its growth. So examples of enriched media are blood agar, which is used to cultivate Streptococcus pyogenes, a pathogen that causes pulse, sepsis, scarlet fever, etc. Then serum dextrose agar, it is used to cultivate brucella abortus that causes brucellosis in dairy animals and causes contagious abortions. Now next is selective media. So mostly we say in your first second years of microbiology course, you are introduced to selective and differential media. Okay, you have this in your theory as well as in your practicals. So get your concept clear here. So what is selective medium? So this kind of medium contains some kind of toxic compound or a substance that inhibits the growth of unwanted microbes okay so say you have a sample so say soil sample so soil contains various different kinds of microorganisms right it has some bacteria some fungal cells or spores some algal cells etc so you don't want everything to grow on your nutrient agar you can't use nutrient agar for that suppose you are just a uh, interested in some um, lactose fermenting me uh, lactose fermenting bacteria so how will you proceed for that so you use a selective media like McConkie's agar which helps you to um, differentiate between lactose fermenting and lactose non fermenting and it also uh, it also works as a selective media that just inhibits the growth of non enteric bacteria okay so you also don't want other non enteric bacteria to grow okay so depending on your aim the use of your media also differs so selective media inhibits the unwanted microbes without affecting the growth of desired ones so compounds has or uh, the compound which the selective media has it has a selective mode of action so in case of McConkie's agar bile salts are present in the composition which inhibits the growth of non enteric bacteria without affecting the growth of enteric one okay for example e coli e coli is an enteric bacteria which grows easily on McConkie's and it also ferments lactose so McConkie's is a selective media 
and also differential media. So it depends on your aim. Next is eosin methylene blue agar or EMB agar. So it contains aniline dyes like eosin and methylene blue that are toxic for gram positive bacteria. Okay, but they are not toxic for gram negative. So that's the difference here and that's the reason why particular aniline dyes are used in this media. Then next is citrumide agar where citrumide which stands for cetyl trimethyl ammonium bromide. It is a selective agent, a detergent that inhibits most bacteria and when it comes in contact with bacteria, it causes the release of nitrogen phosphorus from the bacterial cell which are other than Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So only Pseudomonas aeruginosa will grow, it will flourish on citrimide agar and others are inhibited. Then comes differential media. So these media are capable of differentiating between two types of microorganisms which may be morphologically or biochemically related groups or they are related to each other. So these media normally contain suitable pH indicator due to which on the basis of color development after incubation microorganisms can be differentiated. Example in case of McConkey's agar it is used to differentiate lactose fermenting and non lactose fermenting enteric bacteria depending on the color developed after fermentation of lactose. Okay, so after fermentation, what happens? pH shifts towards acid or acidic, and neutral red turns to pink red. Generally, it is yellow. After a pH shift, it turns pink red if the culture is lactose fermenting. Okay. Then comes the enrichment e media. First we saw was enriched media. Now enrichment media. So this kind of media is designed in such a manner so that growth of desired microorganism present in a mixed population is increased okay, or encouraged. So thus it is normally used to increase the number of desired microbes when it is present in less number in your given sample. Okay. So for example, Asbis broth or Jensen's broth, they are used for enrichment of Azetobacter species. Now how this works? So all these media, all these media means Asbis broth and Jensen's broth, they are devoid of nitrogen. And Azetobacter species, it is known to fix nitrogen. Okay. So media as it is devoid of nitrogen but they contain other suitable sources for carbon and energy as it bacteria can grow and fix nitrogen okay so it is so as it is devoid of nitrogen other soil microbes will not grow but it will support the growth of as species okay then other medias so other than these types or these um, classification that generally we are taught there are some other medias like assay media so assay or assay media where media is prescribed compositions are used for media of prescribed compositions are used for assay of vitamins amino acids or antibiotics best example is muller hinter agar which is used for antibiotic susceptibility testing okay then comes enumeration media so specific kind of media are used for determining the population, bacterial population, say in milk, water, soil or food. So for example, here you can write R2A agar, which is used for enumeration of bacterial population in water. Then comes maintenance media. So it is used for satisfactory maintenance of viability and physiological characteristics of microorganisms. For example, here you can write a particular agar slant of medium uh, which was used for the isolation of that particular culture. That depends. Okay. And you can use same agar slant for the maintenance of your culture. Okay. Now transport media last. So these media, they are used when specimen cannot be cultured soon after collection so you need to store them for some time or um, you have to um, collect sample and you have to travel down to your lab okay so there is some time in between where 
you think that your microbes may die so you cannot collect just sample in your saline so saline water you need a transport medium so your transport medium can be nutrient broth or clary bear medium okay so this was about classification of culture media depending on its role okay so i hope the concept is clear here so i hope you like my video okay do like my video give a thumbs up and do share my videos with your friends and do subscribe to my channel thank you